Good morning, everybody. My name is Pamela Oxenberg, and I want to tell you a little bit of how I became involved in the Golden Retriever breed. It wasn't a straight path. It was more of a couple of curves and hills up and down. But I started when I was 12, and um, my parents purchased an AKC a registered beagle. And to me, he was the king. I named him King Lester. And I dragged my father from well, I can't even say, to, I was going to say to hell and back, but it probably wasn't that bad. And um, he took me to obedience trials and I got a CD on this beagle, which was at the time I didn't realize what a feat that actually was. Oh, I, to, I have to mention, we never housebroke him. So he was pretty, he was pretty untrainable. But anyway, after Lester, then I proceeded to babysit for a lady who had German shepherds and she had a big litter and there was one puppy that had a slightly deformed foot and she said, I'm going to gift this puppy to you. So that puppy was amazing and um, I earned perfect scores and obedience with her. And she was simply spectacular. And then when I um, was done with college, I purchased another German Shepherd from a well-known breeder in downtown Pennsylvania. And he was like my heart dog. He was fabulous. I went high in trouble trial with him from um, Open B and Utility in the Northeast area. And along the way, I met a man called Ed Ham, and he took me under his wing and he was showing a gorgeous golden retriever at the time. And uh, I didn't know it, but he told me that was the first obedience trial champion, breed champion, in our breed, the Golden Retrievers. So he said, I can get you a puppy that um, you can show in obedience and breed, and I'm gonna set you up to meet Ann Johnson. So I met her at uh, an Easter Regional in Poughkeepsie, New York. And when I went there, I, I became slightly confused that when I was watching the breed, there were so many various types and outline of the breed and I was a little confused, but I stayed the course and I did get my Charlie daughter and I put a championship on her and a UD obedience title. I actually won the utility class at, at a national, I believe it was up in Boston uh, with her from utility A. And she was a really super sweet dog and just the best temperament ever. So from there, um, I, um, I have to mention that I finished her championship myself and a lot of it was from American Bread because I didn't know being a novice, I thought that was age appropriate for her and myself. And uh, one day when I had taken the breed, the judge said, I have a question for you. And I said, yes, sir. And he said, why are you showing her in American Bread? <laughs> so I, I quickly learned that um, there was a bigger scope to this than I knew at the time. And uh, from there, I went, I went to handling classes in Fort Lauderdale with her. And uh, my instructor was George Heisman. He's now uh, long passed away. But he took out a chalkboard and he put a dot on it. And he said, um, never forget, this is the universe. The whole chalkboard is the universe. And this dot here, this tiny little dot, that represents dog shows. So uh, I learned to try to keep everything in a worldly perspective and uh, to keep sight that don't let that dog show dot become the biggest part of your life because that's not how life works. <laughs> so from there, I went to Florida and I met Jerry Oxenberg and I fell in love with him. And that's when our paths crossed and meshed and we became Toasty. And the kennel name Toasty came from the second golden retriever he had purchased from a well-known breeder. And we were trying to show her and she would always lose and one day Houston Clark, who was handling her for Jerry said, uh, Jerry, why don't you let me find you a good golden retriever? But anyway, every dog that filed was named in her honor and that's how he got the Toasty Prefix. And she lived till 14 and she was one hell of a pet. She was amazing and super smart. She would open doors, she, she was a holy terror and she ruled the roost. So that was our beginning. We had a small technical glip, glitch here, and we lost the beginning of Jerry Oxenberg. So as he picks up the story, he is telling about his dog, Extra, which he got as a young adult from breeder Gloria Kerr. 
we, she got this, the extra dog back because he um, was not a great obedience dog, although he was an exceptionally nice um, show dog. And he was the first dog that did any winning for me. He was, uh, we didn't show him a lot, but he was probably in the top six or seven in the country. And he had a couple of dozen shows. Um, he Then he pre-produced um, the Toasty Royal Mercedes, who was our, at that time, our biggest winner. And she was the number one gold in the country and also won the national specialty. She produced uh, a bitch called Snickers, who we bred to Malagol's Storm Morning and produced um, six or seven champions in the litter. Um, one of them being the Kansas dog and Rocky. Rocky was uh, number two dog in the country two years in a row. We had multiple best in shows. Uh, Kansas was the better dog and uh, was the better producer. He produced, um, what was the dog's name? That, the one that uh, Marshall York had. Oh, Hubble. Hubble. He produced Hubble, who produced Rotten, who produced Treasure. So that uh, that turned out very well. But getting back to um, our breeding program, it, I don't know how many years it took. We, we, in the beginning, I think we were more lucky than good. Um, but after 10, 11 years, um, you have to have an idea. You have to have a vision in your mind of what the golden retriever is supposed to look like. And you can't vary from that. You cannot breed the dogs that are doing winning that don't have that same vision in your mind. Um, so that's at that point, that's what we uh, we did. And I learned I learned a lot about breeding from Connie Gerstner Miller. Um, she she uh, people who own the Malago dogs know that she never varied from her. You might not like her dogs, but they they were always the same. And that's what we tried to follow. She said you. If you want to breed, if you want to get away from line breeding, you have to breed a dog that is the same type. Um, and that's what we kind of live by. And yeah, you can't, you can't breed the dog from a picture. You have to see the dog in person. We never bred a dog that we didn't see in person. Um, it's about my story. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell a story about Michael. I'm, t I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> oh my! Okay, so in the early, in the nineteen nineties, at some point there was a uh, Eastern Regional. an Eastern Regional in Florida. It was on Lake Mary in the hotel, and there was um, there was vitalities, there was um, sweepstakes, and there was three specialties. And during that time, there was uh, I believe there were forty four classes, and we won fifteen out of the forty four classes. Which is it was the first time when people actually took notice and said, uh, "Toasty dogs are, are, you know, they're they're to be contended with now." And after the show, uh, we were all sitting around at, at the pool area and the barbecue, and um, Michael Faulkner was holding, having a conference with a bunch of 10, 12 people. And, um, and I, I happened to walk up and I hear Michael said, you know, you guys, they're asking him questions. He said, you know, you guys, you have to start looking at the watch to see what Pam and Jerry are doing. And I thought that was quite a compliment at the time. And Jeff Chafin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, again, going back years ago, uh, Jeff Chafin was... Um, a friend of ours, um, he, was, he was an unusual character, we, but I, I enjoy Jeff. And I remember him saying years ago, you can see a toasty golden a mile away. And at the time I wasn't sure if that was a compliment or not, but a few years later I happened, I said, Jeff, when you said that, what'd you mean? He said, Jerry, you, you never went away from what you believe and it was, certainly was a compliment. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's kind of where we are, and we the, the, the um, we just bred from there on. We just never we, we never varied from what we thought was right, and um, some people thought our dogs were plain, but uh, the people who counted that I respected, um, 
you know, the Connie Gerstner's, the Gloria Kerr's, uh, sure. the Marsha Schleyer's, the Betty Gay's, they were all, all supporting us and they supported our dogs. So that was also very important to us. That's it. Hi, I'm Laura Ellis Kling. I started in Golden's when I was in high school, a senior in fact, and had my first litter at that time. I got my gold, first Golden three years before that, and the second one followed as a gift. I had my first litter in January. Out of that first litter, I had two champions, kind of exciting for a first litter and have done it for 50 some years. I love the dogs, I love the people and most of all, I love helping the people within the breed to get started. I've had over a hundred champions, pretty close to 200 titled dogs I just got done typing all that up and was amazed. I had no idea that I had as much as I did. I've had multiple best in show winners. I've had national specialty winners, two of them. And Kathy's probably going, I wonder who the other one is. I know who one is. It was champion Sundance's Vagabond Lover back in 1968. Uh, which was two years after my first dog show that I ever went to, which was a national specialty. So it was nothing like jumping into the fire with not any little steps. So that's kind of where I've come from. And just, I think it's a wonderful breed and I've enjoyed watching it uh, evolve into a different look although I do feel that they still have the same um, traits that they did back then as far as for field. And they're wonderful obedience dogs and wonderful pets. <laughs>